Hello everyone and welcome to Python programming practice. In this episode we are going to be covering lead code number two, add two numbers. This is a medium difficulty problem. So we'll start by reading the description here. You are given two non-empty linked lists representing two non-negative integers. The digits are stored in reverse order and each of their nodes contain a single digit. Add the two numbers and return it as a linked list. You may assume the two numbers do not contain any leading zero, except for the number zero itself. And there's an example here, so let's take a look at that. We can see an input, this is one linked list, two, and then the next link is four, and then the next link is three, plus this other linked list, five, six, four. And since they're in reverse order, I guess that means that uh, this first number is what's in the ones place. This four is in the tens place. And though this is actually 342, this first linked list. This one is 465. And then the output would be a 708 in a linked list form because it looks like the sum of those two numbers is 807. So we would have to store that in a linked list in reverse order with the ones place first, the tens place, and the hundreds place, and then return that as the result. So let's pull over to the code editor here and see what we can do about coding this up. So let's go ahead and look at what we're given to start this problem. There is a definition, a class definition for a singly linked list here. So we have a class of list node, and it takes a value, with the default value of zero, and it has a next, which is a default of none, and then it has two attributes, self.val for the value, and self.next for, I suppose, the next node in the linked list. And then we have the start of our solution definition here, with a def add two numbers, we are given L1, which is a list node object, so one of these linked list classes, and L2, which is the other one, and we're expected to return a list node object at the end of it that is the sum of the values that are contained in these two list nodes. So I'm going to pull up a little whiteboard here and just go through kind of the approach that we're going to take to solving this problem before we start coding. So we're given two lists, L1 and L2, and we need to return their sum as a final list. So we'll call that final list something like added for the added final list. And we'll be given something like, say, 1, 5, 8. So that would be... 851, but it's in reverse order. And say another list, I'm just throwing out random numbers here, four, three, four, and seven. So let's walk through the process of what even adding these up would entail and see what would be a good approach for coding that. With our linked list objects, we're given a starting node position, which would be this first spot. So when we're starting the problem, we're going to start in this position. So we'll have to deal with adding these numbers first, which is probably what we want to do actually, because when we've learned to add numbers, you start in the ones place, add the values together, then you move on to the tens place, add the values together, etc. So we can essentially think of coding up this problem using that very same type of algorithm that we learned to chug through when we were in grade school, where we will add by place, and I suppose also carry over if necessary, if the addition results in something bigger than nine. So in this case, what even would be the solution here? So we would want to return a linked list. We would have to first add the two numbers in the ones place. In this case, it is a four and there is no carryover. So I guess in that case, we would then go to the next link in the chain for both of these because there is still numbers left. 
And with the added, we would also want to go to the next link in the chain. Then we look at the next value. 5 plus 4 is 9. And again, there's no carryover here, so we go to the next link in the chain. And then we would add 8 and 7, that's 15. So in this case, we actually have carryover. So instead of putting a 15 here, which we don't want to do, we would need to put the 5 for the 1's place in this spot, and then carry the 1 over and store the carryover value at the end here. So the actual sum should be 1,594, and then we would return this final linked list with each of the columns added up. Now, we're probably also going to have to account for the possibility of the linked lists not having the same length. Like in this example I drew up here, our L1 and L2 linked lists both had three, so we could just go through place by place, add them together, do the carryover, and not have to worry about the possibility of, say, if this list didn't have that there. Here, let me see if I can erase. If this list had, say, an extra value here, 2, well, eventually we would get to a, a spot where L2 no longer has anything in that place, so that would be a, a none value there, and we'd kind of run off the end, and we can't add 2 to a none value. So that's something we're going to have to be aware of and take care of in our code. But I think this provides enough of a framework for what we need to do here. So let's go ahead and drop back to the code. Can I get rid of that? Yes, I can. And start coding up a solution here. So we're going to have to start the problem by keeping track of some of the things we're accumulating. So for one, we're going to have to keep track of our final linked list that we're going to return, the added list. So let's define that. Added is going to be a list node object. And we can actually set the initial value to what the sum of the ones place should be. So we can just set it equal to what the first sum is. Val should be equal to the sum of what, l1.val plus l2.val. And we also need to make sure that we're not storing something bigger than nine. So it wants to be the sum of these two things, but only the ones place of that sum. So to grab the ones place, we can throw modulo 10 here, and that should define our first part of our final linked list. And we're also going to need to keep track of if there's any carryover. If it was bigger than 10, we have to carry a one over to the next edition. So let's make a new variable to keep track of that, carryover. And that will just be equal to this same sum here. But instead of doing a modulo 10, which is stripping off the ones place, we'll do a floor divide 10. And that will return a zero if this is less than 10 and a 1 if it's greater than 10. So that will define what our carryover is. And as we go through, we also need to keep track of what the node we're currently looking at is. We want to return the entire list at the end, so we're, we'll keep track of that in added. But as we loop through, we're going to be altering each node as we go along, and we're going to need to keep track of the current node for that. So we'll start with the current node we're looking at just being the beginning or added. But, but as we go along and add more links to our added list node, we will be changing what the current node is. All right, so now that we have initialized some variables to keep track of the things we need to keep track of here, we need to construct a loop to go through the linked lists we're given and add each place in turn. Now, the way we're going to do this in this example is do it like we did with, if, with the whiteboard, where we're going to look at each place in turn. And as long as both of the linked lists have something in that place, we will just add those values together and go to the next one. And we'll keep doing that until one of the linked lists doesn't have anything left. 
And then we will have to break out of that loop and figure out how to handle the case where one list might have more values than the other. But for starters, we'll only add up places where both lists have something there. So we don't know how big the lists are going to be ahead of time. With a linked list, checking length is not something that we can do. So we'll have to use a while loop to do this and keep running until we don't have two numbers to add. So we're going to use a while loop. And as long as there is something in the next spot to add, we will continue adding it. And there has to be something for both of the linked lists. So while there is an l1.next node to add something from and an l2.next node. So if there isn't either of these, if one of these is none and missing because it's not there, then the while loop will exit. But until one of those is missing, we're going to add the next thing. So as long as there is something in next for both of these, we are going to say, go to the next one. So, oops, why is it doing that? So L1 will be equal to L1.next. We're going to go to that next thing. And similarly, we're going to go to the next thing for L2. And then once we've gotten to the next node, we have to add them together and then add them as the next part of our linked list that we're storing. So now we have to set the next node in our linked list to the sum of the values in this next place here. So we're going to say our current node dot next is again going to be equal to essentially the same thing here with the updated l1.val and l2.val. And we also need to add in any carryover that we had as well. So we'll just take the code from above and add in this carryover here. And the next node then is going to be the sum of the new l1.val, the new l2.val, and the carryover value. And again, we're going to take the modulo 10 of that whole thing to strip off the ones place value. And now we can update the carryover value. So we'll essentially just do the same thing as we did above with the carryover, except again, we need to add in the carryover from the previous one. And then finally, we need to update the current node to the next node that we just made. So current node is going to be equal to current node.next. So basically what we've done here is we have added whatever place we are in right now together with the carryover, stored that as a new list node, stored any carryover value that resulted from that, and then gone to that next node. And this while loop now will keep running until it goes through every single place in the two lists we were given, and until one of them or both of them has an empty value or none value for the next node. So by the time this exits, we've gotten to the end of at least one of the lists, if not two of them. So after this exits, we now just need to take care of the cases where either the L1 list or the L2 list still has something left in it to add. And there can't be something in both of them because if there was something in both of them, the while loop up here would still be running and adding them together. So we know that either one or the other at this point is empty. They could both be empty. So basically all we have to do here to add in the rest of those values is just run a while loop on L1 and also run a while loop on L2 and keep adding in whatever next value they have there until they're empty. And if they're already empty, then the while loop won't even start running because we'll set it up like we did with the first while loop where if it's empty, the while loop will just exit immediately. So let's show how we can do that. We'll say while l1.next. So that means if there's still something in L1, we're going to do something. We're going to essentially do the same thing we did up here, but only for the L1 values. So we only need to update L1 for this. And we can pretty much copy over this bit of code and just alter it for our purposes. So we're doing all the same things, but we don't need the L2 values because that is empty. So we'll get rid of that and we will get rid of this but everything else should be the same. Now, 
to do the case for the L2, we could just copy this entire bit over and change all the ones to twos. This is a little bit janky in terms of having more code than we probably need if we were to refactor this in some way to get rid of some of this repetition, but this is a pretty easy and quick way of doing it, and I'm not gonna worry too hard about doing extensive refactoring with this uh, example. So hopefully now we are checking if L1 has anything left of it, we are adding that as a new node. If L2 has anything less left in it, we are adding those as new nodes. And once all of these while loops get through, we should have added everything that was in all of the linked lists we were given. Now we do have to do one final thing before we can return our final added linked list here. We have to account for the possibility that after doing all of our additions, we have an extra one that we are carrying over. If you recall in our example here, um, the original part of the example anyway, we had a 15 at the end, and then this, this added to 15, and we had to carry over this extra one here. Even though the length of the first two linked lists was only three long, the length of the final list was four long because we had to carry over that extra one. So we have to account for that carrying over now. So let's see, how can we do that? If, if our carryover, carry over, I guess we don't need the parentheses, but they're there now, is greater than zero, that means we actually do have carryover, then we'll set the current node.next node equal to a list node where the value is just equal to one. The, the carryover value can never be more than one with an addition. If we had nines in both places, we'd have 18. And if we, even if we had one carried over from before, that would be 19. So the, the biggest carryover value there can possibly be is a one. So we know that if it's bigger than zero, it's gonna be a one. So that accounts for that case where we have that extra carryover value. And now, we should have our entire linked list built up in this added that we stored. So we will say return added. And if we haven't made any errors, when I hit submit here, this should pass the tests. So let's do that and see what we get. So it is saying pending, speed up something something. I will pull over and see the result. So we got a success here, run time of 80 milliseconds, faster than 55.5% of Python 3 submissions. So it was comparable to what other people have submitted for this problem. So as we kind of maybe expected based on what I said earlier about refactoring, there is probably some ways to make this code a little cleaner, a bit less code. You could probably find a way to do this with only one while loop and do some checks within that first while loop in order to figure out whether you should be adding in L1, L2, or both at the same time. But I thought this was a nice way to think about the problem because really, if you want to break it down in terms of the addition algorithm that we all know and love from when we were in grade school, adding the first two values, the next two values, etc., until one of the lists is, is done with, and then going on and doing a loop over whichever list still has values in it. I thought that was just a good way to think about approaching this problem. So I hope you found this explanation useful. You could perhaps for a challenge try to refactor this code or come up with your own solution that runs faster than what we made here. So thanks for watching and keep coding.